Do you remember how you thought about women when you were in your 20s and 30s of women older than you? Maybe your mother, maybe your grandmother, maybe your auntie, maybe neighbors, or just other women in general, who I'd say were probably at least 20 years older than you, so at any given time. Um, I'm 45 and I was reflecting on this because it is something that I've tried to do throughout my life is remember how I thought of things so that you don't make the same mistakes, right? And so I've been reflecting on uh, styles that I thought were old lady or aging and I used to think, why would ladies do that? Why would they wear that? And it is something that I like to reflect on so that you can change, so that you don't keep making the mistakes, so that you are more mindful. So if you want to hear my what not to wear and what to wear instead, then just stay tuned. All right, ladies, I am going to be reading from my notes and this is actually not a note <laughs> book. It is my iPad, isn't that cute? I will, I found this on Amazon recently. I will link it below. I think it's the cutest thing to disguise your iPad, but if you love your iPad as much as I do, I actually picked up the new 10th generation one, which I'm loving. It is in a pretty pink color, but you can't tell uh, in this case. And it's just so great to take notes, watch shows on, uh, read books, all of the things. So I really enjoy having it. But uh, let's get into the list. Now, I hope that this list does not come off as me. That is not my intention at all. Um, this is just things that I think about. And with a lot of the trends that are uh, in fashion right now, it is just opening the gate for a lot of these mistakes. And so I keep seeing certain people pushing some of the trends because they are on trend. Um, but we as ladies over uh, 40 or over 50 plus uh, don't need to follow all the trends. And there is a way to do so, to stay current, to stay modern, but you don't have to do it the same as a 20 or 30 year old um, because it just, I feel, doesn't come off the same. So that's my little disclaimer. <laughs> So fashion mistake number one is going to be overly matching outfits. And you know the ones I'm talking about, sold at uh, many of our favorite stores uh, from time to time. They will have a little jacket or cardigan with the matching top, with the matching pants and the matching shoes. Too much, <laughs> that's too much. So even if it's all in a unique color, say it's all in like a turquoise or a yellow of the exact same shade, um, I feel that that is very aging or even worse is a uh, print in, in the whole, like that, where everything is just coordinated, uh, overly coordinated and uh, just I think is aging. Mistake for years is the animal print too. Um, so just anything too matchy matchy looks aging. Instead, because I do love a monochrome look, I think it looks beautiful, timeless, classy, fashionable. Uh, what you would wanna do instead is personalize that. So say you are at one of those stores and they have a beautiful shade of pink that you love or a beautiful shade of blue. Instead of buying everything from that store, get the piece that you like the most and then find the, the coordinating pieces and make it your own. Um, I think that adding different you know, pieces and different textures and in slightly different tones just looks more stylish, more fashionable, um, and not so old lady catalog look like. Neutrals are always a great uh, way to go and you don't have to match head to toe. You, you know, varying shades of ivory and beige looks really beautiful. The same with white. I feel if you are gonna be matchy matchy, some colors that it can work with are classic. So it can work in white, it can work in black, it can work in uh, red, something like that. But those still can be in varying tones and uh, different fabrics, and that's gonna look a lot more stylish than a store-bought matchy-matchy head-to-toe look. Okay, and my tip number two to stay away from is too much jewelry 
or ex excessive jewelry, chunky jewelry, which chunky jewelry is trending. And if you do like it, I would say opt for one piece. So wear a just a chunky necklace and only one, not a whole bunch. Um, if you like a chunky earring, I almost wouldn't go for anything too big because as we age, you know, our earlobes start to sag a little. We have some sagginess in the jawline and neck. So you don't want to just make that whole area heavier. Um, if you want a statement piece, I think a pretty hoop uh, is always a great option. I think it is youthful, playful, a little sassy. So hoops are always a great option and you can get them in varying sizes. Um, and then just whatever piece you like. You could also do a statement uh, bracelet. So I actually have one hidden under my, <laughs> I had my sleeves pulled up earlier. Uh, I actually had this one made, uh, I think in my 30s as a birthday present to myself. And so I've had it for quite a while. And when you do get a beautiful statement piece, uh, it can stand the test of time. So I would say avoid too much jewelry and too much chunky jewelry. If you want to you know, do the, the chunky trend, do one piece total so if you're already wearing a chunky bracelet then no chunky necklace no chunky earrings keep those more minimalistic and then just stick with the one piece a tip number three that ages us that can age us is a matron matronly <laughs> looking skirt suit so if you're still in the workforce or you're still meeting with clients, customers, maybe even if you're volunteering or going to your church, avoid a matronly looking skirt suit. And these are the ones that are just really structured, um, kind of an oversized top, really maybe too long with a too long of skirt. There's so many options these days that you don't have to go for that. I think a matching uh, you know, top, suit top and skirt can look lovely. Say you have it all black or all, you know, maroon or gray can look really nice. And then break it up with the, a completely different top blouse underneath, completely different shoes. Um, I, I think overly, again, overly matching can age you. Avoid the matrony looking skirt suits and instead opt for a stylish fit that flatters your shape. And tip number four, it kind of goes along with the last one, and that is avoid ill-fitting clothes. Um, I think as we age, and sometimes when we gain weight that we don't want or we aren't used to, it can be really easy to just throw on a big oversized tee, a big oversized sweater, and some baggy pants and just go out the door and that certainly looks frumpy and it's not that you can't wear an oversized clothes i'm wearing an oversized sweater today um, styling it just doing a couple little tweaks changes the whole vibe so maybe it has a v-neck maybe you pull up your sleeves maybe you do a little bit of a tuck you could do a little front tuck or if you um don't like tucking they do make there's a lot of cropped sweaters out right now and you don't have to go too many sizes up no matter your size because if you're wearing something highly oversized and just letting it drape over you it doesn't hide weight it just makes you look bigger so you do need to wear properly fitting clothes and then if you are self-conscious maybe you have because i do rolls around the midsection rolls in the back you can opt for a light third layer or if it's a cool, cooler month, you know, a nice uh, cardigan of some type or something like that. So there are ways to style around issues that you, uh, you know, don't want to show to the world. I totally understand that. But just throwing on a big t-shirt or big sweater it is not the way it's not going to make you feel your best and it's not going to make you look your best either so all right now uh, my tip number five may get some opinions <laughs> and that is uh wearing frumpy 
footwear. Now, I like comfortable footwear as much as the next person, and I realize that some people have uh, it, health issues, feet issues, where they can't wear heels. So I, at my age, have opted to wear, I do still like a heel, I will only wear a two, maybe two and a half inch heel. Two and three quarters is too high for me. You do have to find yours, and there are, there are so many beautiful, uh, you know, low heels. So either one inch or even half an inch, or even flats, or even orthopedic shoes. Now I know the other side of this is that some of those comfortable, um, you know, healthy shoes can be more pricey. So what I would advise to do is, you know, stay on top of your favorite site sites for their sales. Also in your town, go to your high end you know, shoe store, not the one that sells, you know, uh, Louis Vuitton or Gucci, the one that sells Clarks and, and Echo. Uh, go there because they as well change out their shoes every season. They're always getting in new fashions. They too have a sales section. And the people who know go in there and get the, the $100, $200 shoes at 50 to 80% off. So the people who usually run those, it's usually kind of small mom and pop places, at least in my area. So it's great to support them and they'll get to know you and maybe they can even call you if a pair that you were looking at goes on sale. So there are so many options today that I would say you don't have to wear the old clunky old lady shoes. There are cute and stylish ways to wear all of the trends. So tip five is avoid frumpy footwear and instead take some time and look for a stylish option that is wearable for you. All right, and my tip number five, no tip number six, uh, that can age us or have us looking frumpy is always wearing high necklines. Now, I, I know why we wanna do it. I actually currently have the issue of starting to get the chest wrinkles from side sleeping. So I'm working on sleeping on my back. I just ordered a wedge pillow um, and am trying that out, super comfortable and trying to learn to sleep on my back. So I'll link that below as well. If you've never heard of that or anything, um, apparently that is the way to completely solve that issue. But, so you do need some high neck things for the days that you do have that issue, but really wearing varying um, lengths, maybe uh, a V-neck obviously is a great uh, option and it can go as low or not as low as you want. Um, also a button down is great because maybe you can just sometimes have it buttoned up, but sometimes button an extra button just for a little fun and fashion and flair. So consider different necklines to keep you looking modern and more youthful and not old and frumpy. And if you've made it this far, hi, I'm Liz. If this is your first time here, um, I'd love to have you subscribe and come back and visit me again. But if you are enjoying this content, be sure to give it a like so that YouTube will push it out to more ladies that it can potentially help. All right, and on to tip number seven, a fashion mistake that you may be making that is aging you is wearing baggy jeans, tapered legs, uh, the old cropped look. Ugh. This is a dying trend. It, it is going away, women are realizing. And this is another thing. So when trends come and go, the rules don't fly out. So if a pant cuts you at your leg and makes you look wider and shorter, it always does. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if cropped pants come in, if capris come in, that rule didn't change. It, it, it just, you just wanna try a new style out and that's fine. I like to try them too. I'll, you will see me try crazy things on. If you are a subscriber, I get hauls in and I try everything on. <laughs> Even if I'm like, mm, I don't know about this. Uh, because you never know, you never know. But in the back of your mind, you gotta remember some fashion rules and so, Overly baggy pants are gonna make you look bigger than you are. 
cropped pants are gonna make you look bigger and shorter than you are. Um, Sometimes a, a tapered uh, pant is not gonna give the silhouette that you want. So a straight leg, or I think the boot cut is just a classic. Um, those will stand the test of time. The rest are trends and they're fun to have a little bit of, but not a lot of, um, because as we get older, too many trendy things, you know, the distressed pants, the uh, embellished pants, uh, they just don't look good. They don't look good. Um, let the 20 and 30 year olds have that. That's okay. You can look stylish and, and add something else in. All right. And my <laughs> fashion mistake number eight kind of almost goes in this. And this is a fine line. And I don't even have a, a definite line for you to not cross on that. And that is pleated pants. So when done right, they can waterfall down and look beautiful. Now I do have a tummy issue where I can't have it hugging. I need that perfect fall. And so I have found pleated pants that do look lovely, that just give you like that kind of flatter looking stomach. We'll go over the rolls, bumps, bulges, but some will accentuate the issue and and they're not created equally and i can't tell you they're almost like the jean issue like you have to find your perfect pair of jeans you have to find your perfect pair of pleated pants there are many more pants many more styles many more seasons and you will find your your right pair don't don't settle get get a beautiful pair that you can keep and look great on you and you feel great in for years and years to come oh and i wanted to also mention uh fashion is subjective we can all change our minds we all do change our minds. We all have different issues going on. So this is just my opinions. I'm, I'm only trying to help and uh, you know, nothing set in stone. So if you love anything that I'm saying is a don't, then, then you do it, <laughs> you know, because in the end, I mean, it matters how you feel the most. That's what matters the most, how you feel in your clothes and how you are out in the world. And so really that's what this is all about. This is my intention is to help you feel your best. Um, and in the end, that's, that's the most important thing. Okay. <laughs> the next one is another trend that is it's coming back. It's trying to come back strong. And ladies, I think this is one that we have to be careful with, and that is large shoulder pads, exaggerated shoulder pads, like 80s style shoulder pads. Uh, you know, I didn't even love them when Dynasty was on, and if you've heard of that, then you know. Um, they're, they're bringing it back, and it looks great on the six foot tall models who are like 120 pounds. That's great, but, for us, I would say do stick to just a uh, more conservative uh, shoulder pad, just enough that you need. And again, all of us are different sizes. So I have a little bit broader shoulder, so I always opt for a really small one if I want that tailored look, but maybe you're petite, so you could do a little bit of a bigger one or maybe uh, you are large busted, and then I would say maybe a smaller one as well because you're already carrying a lot of weight up top. So you kind of have to play with this, but the big boxy, you know, linebacker looking shoulder pads is not gonna be flattering, I think, for most women over 40. It isn't giving the look that you're intending, so I would be careful with those. Okay, and tip number 10 that is aging you beyond your years is dowdy outerwear. So from really just frumpy outerwear. Now, I know some of you live in harsh weather conditions, but there's so many cute jackets. So if you have had the same jacket for 10, 20 years, maybe, consider getting an updated look, an update, uh, updated style, something newer. Um, I think 
just a sad looking jacket, <laughs> something that looks like it's your husband's or your dad's, uh, just isn't real cute looking. It's not fashionable and definitely, again, adds weight, adds, you know, unneeded bulkiness and just looks frumpy and aging. Okay, and the next one is excessive ruffles. Now, they look adorable on two-year-olds, right? <laughs> on little girls, eight, nine years old. Um, and then into your teens, um, you know, some girls will wear it on their little mini skirt. And then in your 20s, maybe on your blouse. Um, and the older we get, the less ruffles we need. So all these big ruffly tops and dresses, ruffles everywhere are uh, not stylish as we age. They add, again, bulk and weight, and they just don't, they look frumpy. They look frumpy. I would say too many ruffles, it can be an old lady trait. Okay, <laughs> and my tip 14, hopefully none of you are doing this, but I do see it time to time. Uh, no, don't wear socks with sandals. <laughs> No, that doesn't look good. That definitely screams old lady. If you have to wear a compression sock or something, then you are gonna wear, wanna wear a maxi skirt because that's gonna cover the whole situation. Um, a lot of times, some of the women I know will just put them on in the evenings or you wear pants that day with you know a lovely supportive shoe. So there are, if you have to wear like a supportive sock, do it in those ways. Don't wear your knee, you know, your knee length skirt or shorts and your sandals and socks. That just screams like old for sure. And this one isn't one I see very often, but I wanted to throw it in there in case anyone's doing it. Uh, pillbox hats or, vi or vi uh, you know, the ones with the little veil. Um, I do see uh, kind of the royal family in the UK doing this and they're usually doing it for events or for because they know they're being photographed and things like that but i think for you know ladies uh over 40 who are just trying to look stylish and have pieces that are timeless and longer lasting i would say opt for more classic items that you can wear year after year if you have an outfit or an event that you go to where this is acceptable, I would say that's fine. Obviously that's a unique event, but day to day, week to week, month to month, um, I would say that does give kind of an old lady vibe. And fashion mistake 16 that I have for you is tweed overload. So this is another thing where you can see some of the models, um, some of the young people wearing a cute little tweed jacket, cute little tweed mini skirt, and it looks really lovely and stylish. But when you put that on an older lady, um, and this does not matter size, so this is, this is not going by size, um, I just think it looks more matronly. And even if you are in shape, it, it's still the same thing because I don't know, like I think that most of the time that you, you can tell and it is kind of associated with older women. I would say if you do like the tweed look, something I do is usually just opt for a blazer or a little jacket and then pair it with something more modern. Maybe your wide leg jeans, maybe um, a silk or satin skirt would be beautiful. So again, uh, mixing the fabrics, mixing the colors is gonna look more fashionable um, and more stylish and not frumpy and aging. My number 18 wanted to share, so let's talk it through, and that is ankle length skirts or i.e. maxi skirts. So sometimes, depending on the rest of the outfit, they can be aging. They can come off as too overly conservative. They can come off as too matronly. So you do have to be mindful of the rest of your outfit. So it kind of goes to that balancing, uh, 
formula, right? If you have a big flowy dress on the bottom, maybe a fitted top, and if you're self-conscious about the top area, you just put on a maybe cropped third layer. So balancing the whole look is going to be key. What you don't want to do is wear a long flowy skirt and then have a long flowy top. And especially in the exact same pattern, <laughs> uh, don't do that. That certainly screams old lady and we don't want to do that. You don't need to do that. There's so many stylish options nowadays that, um, that is not even necessary. So, be mindful of the color, the fabric, the fit, the other items that you're pairing with it. The next uh, fashion mistake is kind of touches on one that we talked about, but this is heavily layered necklaces. And I wanted to mention this one because I do see where the, our trend is going. So we were doing delicate necklaces, which I'm still on. <laughs> Uh, I did do the big statement necklaces in the 90s, but uh, I have never gone back to it. Uh, so I know the chunky chains are in, and now what they're doing is two or three stacked necklaces, which can look good. And I would say probably two or three max is good. Uh, getting into just a bunch, draping down the front of you, is definitely an old lady look. So again, this is my reflection. These are things I tell myself don't do because of how I thought. Uh, if you disagree with me, you can let me know down below. I would love to hear from you. Okay, we're getting near the end. Number 19 is your choice of turtleneck. I never thought I'd give up turtlenecks. I used to love turtlenecks in my 20s and 30s. But as I've gotten older, I'm starting to get, I try to hide it here. So hopefully I do a pretty good job. <laughs> but the saggy skin all in the neck area, and I have found that turtlenecks just accentuate it. They almost highlight the issue. They're not covering it. Um, maybe if you have only issues at the bottom, but really, I, you know, we all start to get like the jaw and the, and it's just so, be careful with the turtlenecks. Um, that's all I would say. Uh, I think it can be done overall is something I avoid. Every now and then I will find one that I can wear, but I find I don't reach for it very often because it then in turn is just covering so much up here that that brings out other issues um, that I am trying to not accentuate. So overall, unless it's in an entire piece, like a dress or something, uh, it's a style that I have learned to avoid as I've gotten older. Okay, and the next one is overly baggy sweaters. And by this, I'm kind of mean like sweatshirts and outer wear, just out and about with just a big old hoodie on or, um, you know, just a big like, <laughs> sweatshirt, crew neck sweatshirt. And I would say, again, those are items that you can wear. I think that they are necessities and part of you know normal life, but there is a way to style them and everything else that you're wearing with them does matter and it's not always the answer. And you could possibly even wear a ba bigger baggier sweater or cardigan in the right shade, in the right fabric, in the right length. So I would say maybe think of a more cropped look, maybe wearing something fitted underneath, or one of my favorites is a very long duster. So you can still get that big, cozy, oversized feeling, um, but the length kind of you know, make gives you long lines. So the whatever you're wearing underneath, it, it just makes it look smaller because you know everything's covered up just a bit on the edges. So consider a duster. I think it is a timeless staple. Uh, don't get something trendy. Simple, clean lines, solid colors, a beautiful fabric is the way to go. All right, ladies, that was my tips for uh, what not to wear and what to wear instead so that you don't look old lady. <laughs> I hope that it didn't offend anyone. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, share it with your friends and uh, be sure to give me a like. 
If you enjoyed this video, uh, you may also like these two that I will link right here for you to watch next. I hope that you have a great day and I hope to see you in the next one.